Just to remind everybody that uh, we are in South Somerset, rather than Mendo, which I'm sure many of you. That, that's my fault. I know. I know. <laughs> I've um, come from Mendo. Oh, there you go. A beautiful place, nevertheless. Um, before I start, I feel pretty inadequate because I don't have a map, um, so you're just going to have to bear with me. Um, but can I just have a show of hands, please? How many of you um, live in South Somerset? Oh. Wonderful, thank you very much indeed. Well, this is, I'm hopefully going to show you um, a little bit more about what we're doing um, in South Sunset and how we might uh, get involved in some of the work that we're doing um, with our, within our communities. Um, so, as um, has been said, my name is Sarah Dyke. I'm an elected um, uh, ward member uh, representing Noble Port down in South East um, Sunset. Um, but I'm also the portfolio holder for environment uh, as well, and I was uh, appointed a portfolio holder in uh, May 2019. Um, at that point, um, we uh, declared a uh, climate and ecological emergency, uh, and then soon after, in October 2019, we were able to adopt our um, climate and environment strategy. Uh, in which we made a commitment to create uh, biodiverse areas for wildlife to thrive. And we've subsequently um, delivered a number of initiatives, and I'm going to go through them in a little bit more detail um, today, but has already been said on the edge, which is our verge conservation um, trials in the district. Um, we've also worked on wildflower seed giveaways and the great parish tree giveaway scheme, which is always a bit of a tongue twister. And we've also taken, uh, undertaken a review on our land management uh, through the development of our what is uh, going to be our um, open spaces strategy, which is under development at the moment. And we're also transitioning to a sustainable land management practices across all our um, South Sunset District Council owned sites. So what we're working really hard to do now is to embed all of that activity uh, and then really build on all of that good work that we've now started. So, um, as I've already mentioned, we've um, been trialling some changes to the way that we um, manage some of our green spaces in the district. Uh, initially, this was looking at how we could support the uh, plant life initiatives around the No Mo May um, campaign, and we've built on, built on that. And from that, we've now um, recently completed the first year of our On the Edge uh, Verge Conservation Trials. Um, and uh, we're um, now developing those further, and we're going to be enhancing those by um, more, including more wildflower verges on some of the selected areas um, across South Sunset District Council owned land. Um, what we want to do there is to kind of take into account some of the lessons um, learned from the work um, within our countryside team um, and also from those lessons learned within our communities. We've had a lot of community engagement, so we've had lots of experiences on the ground that obviously we want to enhance and uh, build back. Uh, but also we've had a lot of work that's been going on at the wonder rather wonderful and beautiful site up at uh, Ham Hill Country Park, which many of you are sure will be familiar with. So the trials that um, are on the edge um, conservation trials on the verges. Um, this year included 15 sites. Um, we had six in Ilminster, um, we had four in Castle Carey and Ansford, we had one in Cuplington and uh, four in Millwall Port. Um, so we were able to really um, develop those and I'll, I'll talk about how we did that and how we want to uh, move that forward uh, in a minute. But those trial sites were um, really a way in which we could kind of kind of touch base on what was going on and reassess um, how and where we could mow um, on our SSDC land and also the process and what we wanted to do was obviously help inspire our communities to get in, involved and develop um, you know, their knowledge around some of the marginal spaces that they could help develop and enhance um, perhaps in a, in a different way because um, quite often and certainly in the village that I live in in, in Cuckington, um, there is a, um, 
uh, quite a lot of people um, who quite like everything to be in uh, mode um, for an inch of its life. Um, we've got the, what I call the leap freak gang, um, but uh, like everything to be mode very tightly, which of course um, there, are, there are places for that, um, but I think now the trajectory is to try and um, develop some of these spaces to make things uh, and areas look a little bit, look a little bit different. Skip the slide, I think, there. So, um, just trying to look now a little bit more around the community engagement side of things, which is massively important to, to the work that we're doing. Obviously, um, a lot of this work has to be bottom up, it has to be um, community focused. We want to get everybody um, engaged. And I, I think that for me, the wonderful thing that these Virtuside um, trial sites have done is have, you know, we can um, engage people right across our community spectrums from the young to the old and also bring in some of the people who, who not necessarily are engaged in community life. They've really um, taken hold of some of this work and we're seeing more and more people um, participating and enjoying some of the work that, that we're doing. So, um, as I said, collaboration has been really important. The sites that we've developed have been with the involvement of our town and parish councils and the wider community, but also our skilled grass cutting um, crews at uh, South Sunset District Council, who you know probably better than anywhere, anyone, some of the, some of the areas that uh, um, could be uh, um, useful for, for this site. Um, we've mentioned citizen science um, before in, in, in the presentations, but also, obviously, clearly, it's really important for the work that we're doing um, on our verge sites. Um, we've really encouraged our local with plant and invertebrate ID survey sheets um, so that they can record their findings as, as we go along, so we can really develop that baseline um, work and then enhance that going forward um, throughout the year so we know the difference. Um, that these schemes um, can make to wildlife um, in each uh, site's area. We've also provided the appropriate communication tools to ensure that the whole community know what's um, happening in their spaces. Um, and again, as Jolyon said, it's, it's, it's that engagement to make sure that people don't just do something and then people are going, hey, hang on a minute, we weren't told about this. We want to get people on board. We want people to own those areas and feel, um, you know, it's their part of that management um, of, of those areas. Um, so we want to ensure that that monitoring is carried out and we want people to help understand the changes um, that take place in those areas, whether it be in the species that are found there, uh, but also the management requirements of, of um, developing such a site, because obviously we know that we've got to mow a little bit earlier and then much later um, in the seasons as well. Um, we're also working um, with um, engaging our residents um, to help share that information um, with the Somerset Environment uh, Record Centre as well as, uh, on, as um, submitting their online um, recording forms as well. So, um, I wanted, as there's so many people in the room that are from South Somerset, I also wanted just to kind of hopefully uh, encourage people how they might get involved in some of our future work. So the trials then um, become embedded into what we do within, within the district. So we want to reach out to um, people right across the district to get involved and expand the initiative from those um, initial 15 sites across the district. And we want more and more, and I've spoken to many people already who live in South Somerset who want the, some um, conservation areas in, um, in is ready for, for, for next year. So uh, steps that we, we would take, what we would normally do if somebody comes uh, uh, and talks to us about creating a space, we just develop a, a map for each parish, each area, and we've got some environment uh, champions who I'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a minute because they're absolutely key to the work that we do. Um, so then we can assess the, the areas, the possible areas for um, this kind of management, and then we'll agree a scheme of activity because every area is going to be managed slightly differently, and obviously we want to make sure that we bring the best benefit um, and the um, changes that the community want to, to um, 
um, see happen um, in their particular area. Um, for my area, particularly in South Somerset, I'm very lucky to have one of these trial sites literally right outside my door. And uh, it looks out over um, what is a fantastic view over the Blackmore Vale. And um, we're hoping this year, um, coming year, we'll be able to um, plant some wildflower seeds that are in the colours of red, white, and blue so that we can help the community celebrate the um, Queen's and um, Platinum Jubilee. Um, well, we have our little garden party, street party, along that view. So we'll have a beautiful vista um, when the garden party and um, street party takes place. Um, next year to celebrate that. So that's just something that we're, we're doing in, in Cuplington, but obviously every site is going to be doing something very different um, on their sites, and we want to have the flexibility to allow them, to everybody to do that. So um, going, going on to our wildflowers and um, seed giveaway, obviously I, in, in Cuplington I want red, white and blue, thank you very much, but other people might, uh, other communities might want something quite different. So we're encouraging communities to come to us and say what they want, we'll also work with them to ensure um, what they want actually fits that particular site as well. Um, so obviously planting things that are inappropriate is just going to be a waste of um, everybody's time, so we're going to make, make sure we manage expectations from that early start and we've got our team of environment specialists at the district council who will, who will help each um, community um, develop their site in the best possible way. So um, we're going to be giving out these uh, free wildflower packages to um, support our community projects. Uh, applications are going to be sent out uh, very soon at the beginning of December. Uh, there's an email address that applications should be sent to, so please, if you are in South Somerset and want to be part of the scheme, please do note down the um, um, email address uh, that's on the screen now. So what we're doing is uh, asking parishes to identify the sites for wildflowers, um, hopefully making sure that it's an open and sunny um, site, either flat or um, slightly sloping, and obviously a, a relatively large area is um, best for diversity, 25 metres squared, 250 metres squared is ideal, but as I've said, my, my, um, kind of my site in Cuplington is a little smaller than, smaller than that, and as you can imagine, quite long and thin at the top of a, uh, a hill, but obviously, so we want to be flexible. And just remember, you're not on, not on your own at all. We've got loads of resources available on our um, South Sunset Environment uh, website, so please do um, have a look at that. We were very lucky to have um, Kate Petty um, at a, a recent uh, webinar that we held uh, a couple of months ago, and that is uh, available. Kate Petty is from uh, Plant Life, although I believe that she's she's off to pastures new now. Um, but she was re a really interesting presentation. It's available on our website if you want to have a look at that as well. And um, we're also going to be developing more webinars uh, and, and workshops going forward in early 2022. I suspect that most of them will probably be online. Uh, but that's going to be covering uh, anything around um, land preparation and also management ideas uh, going forward as well. So our parish environment champions, as I've already mentioned, are absolutely crucial to the work that we do um, across our Somerset District Council. And they're, they're our conduit, if you like, to our, um, into our communities. There are eyes and ears of what goes on. Um, across the district so we can really make sure that there's that communication back and back and forward. Um, we've got about 50 um, environment champions across our parishes. We're always looking for more. So if you feel that uh, you don't know who your parish champion, environment champion is, get in touch with the uh, parish council. Hopefully they'll be able to sign post you to your environment champion. And if you find that you haven't got an environment champion in your parish, then step up and join the network. We'd love, love to see you um, there. Obviously, you have that interest already in what's going on um, in the countryside uh, there. So our environment champions are kind of a brilliant resource. Um, and they, we, we meet regularly online, as it has been, but to sh share best practice, their knowledge, their expertise, so that we can really share that uh, around the, um, the district. Um, we're also um, looking at uh, making sure that uh, we develop more from our uh, verge trials. And so we're now seeing more and more examples of local initiatives being set up separately um, to our trials. 
And uh, there's one amazing site in um, Barwick and Stoford Parish, and the images are on the screen, uh, screen now. You can see what was that I aforementioned to that, that neat freak idea of uh, everything being uh, streamed to an inch of its life. And then the image on the right hand side, there's a you know, really beautiful vista of, uh, of wildflowers. So just giving you a quick overview of some of the other initiatives that we, we're um, doing in our, across our environment team in South Somerset. Um, as I've already mentioned, we've, um, we've run two years now of the Great Parish Tree Giveaway, uh, started in 2019. 60 parishes have participated um, in this, and, and this scheme alone has generated um, in the region 6,100 trees being planted across the district. In addition to that, um, we've also planted 12,500 uh, trees since um, 2019. Obviously, planting season is just uh, um, upon us now, uh, and there'll be many more um, trees being planted uh, across the district. So again, if you've got any sites within, you, within your parishes uh, that you know of that would benefit from some tree planting, then please do contact uh, the district council. We'll be pleased to work with you uh, to get some trees planted um, over this season. Um, in addition to that, we've been working with landowners um, and in partnership, working with uh, reimagining the levels, which is uh, promoting tree planting to slow the flow uh, and a project around, I think, 20,000 trees have been planted in 2020 alone, um, which is going to help um, provide natural flood resistance, uh, resilience there. We're also, as I mentioned before, looking at more sustainable land management um, across our, um, our district and including a really lovely site actually that we've got in the Oval Recreation Centre um, which has, has really been enhanced um, beyond belief actually over the last couple of years so if, you, if you're passing in, into Yeovil do go and uh, have a look at the Oval Recreation Centre it's really beautiful there and we've got a brand new cafe there so you can go and enjoy have a cup of coffee uh, while you're there as well. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of work that we've been doing across all sorts of stakeholders um, within the district, and certainly Wildlife Trust is, is one of them, but many, many more across the area to really develop the area. Uh, and again, a lot of this work is going to be um, in our, captured in our open spaces strategy, which is uh, being developed at the moment, and we should have a draft strategy out very shortly. So just kind of finalising now what lessons we have learned, because that's really important um, to us to ensure that we, we take forward the work that we're doing and we learn our lessons um, about how we can best implement some of these schemes going forward. And I think to me, one of the key things is we've got a brilliant team of um, horticulturists and experts within the South Sunset District Council. But it's been really important um, that we get those um, people on board we're doing it and really um, help them to take ownership of some of the work that they're carrying out and they then as they're out working they can then um, tell the story um, to communities because they talk to a lot of residents about the work that they've been doing and uh, you know, there has been a little bit of pushback saying people saying you know unfortunately this area hasn't been mowed why hasn't it been mowed I can't pick up my dog poo because the grass is too long. So, you know, we need to engage um, all of that so that people really do find out the, you know, the real reasons why we're doing it. Um, we want to, as I said, man, make sure that we engage with local residents. We want people to get on board with what we're doing. So we're, we're developing a lot of signage um, out there so that we can really tell people what it's all about and manage those expectations um, to the residents. So we don't have people coming to us asking why you know things aren't aren't being cut as they would normally do. And then we can help engage with them and educate people about why we're doing this, why we're making uh, these changes. So we want, as I said, we want to make sure that we um, and develop the scheme further. So we've invested in new kit, um, and you'll see in the bottom photograph there, underneath the shadows, this is, uh, both of these photos are actually taken um, right outside my door in Cuplington. Um, this is our new um, uh, uh, machine um, that will um, basically cut and remove the grass cuttings um, ready for um, the winter season, so that we're not kind of then leaving those grass sure that we, we make the best possible choices for conservation in the areas we, we you know, believe it's such an important part of the work that we do um, in the area so um, I just want to kind of leave you with a 
really a quote, uh, an email um, message that I got through from um, somebody quite recently about what we were doing. I was really worried when I first saw the um, email uh, because the email was titled I'm not very impressed by the no-mo areas. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and then I opened up the email and this is what I saw. And I was, it was so heartwarming. I know the family, the kids are amazing and they've been going out onto the viewpoint in Cuppington with their little binoculars, two little kids, twins of about six years old. And they've been going out with their binoculars, their pretend cameras and notebooks and, you know, and pens and paper and drawing, colouring, crayons, etc. And this to me um, was just the most wonderful thing to receive. And I hope that going forward, I'll receive many, many more messages like this um, because it really makes it all very, very worthwhile. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I hope that's been of interest to you. Thank you.